Talking financial organization and a professional practice does not have to be boring. Are you ready for a few money in, money out ideas? It's Susan Gunn coming directly to your head to make you think. Can you handle the truth? Because she is known for being energetic, laughs a lot, and gives honest, sometimes direct, but always practical advice. It's time now for Money In, Money Out. Maybe it is because I could never imagine doing what some people have chosen to do in their lives. But I have always been surprised at what links some people will do to get what they want. All in the name of greed, actually. Unadulterated greed. And since COVID-19 shut down businesses and our government provided grants and loans to help, the amount of that deception, the amount of that fraud, the links that some people have chosen to go to, it is staggering. Fraud has grown, and it's growing by the minute. One person used his deceased brother's personal information to obtain an an idle loan. Many forged tax records. Many forged bank statements. One fraudulent unemployment claim recipient was serving time in prison. A few taxpayers and bookkeepers were also in on the multitude of frauds. A couple of law enforcement officers. I mean, it just amazes me. It's like the time was reap and they seized the opportunity and they went with it regardless of the cost. Many bought luxurious items, including cars. Oh my gosh, the cars. Jewelry, designer handbags, vacations, gold coins, imported furnishings, cosmetic surgery, but also, and we'll get back to the cosmetic surgery, but also Bitcoin and securities. So I guess they were looking towards investments in their fraud. Hmm. Some filed for unemployment benefits in multiple states. Some received their unemployment benefits through a gift card. Some quickly moved their money offshore. Some transferred it. This is really dumb. From the business account to the personal account. Yeah, that's not cool. That's a real red flag. Most submitted forged documents, made false claims about employees and their businesses. Some gambled the money. Some moved their money offshore. I mean, that to me, that's a pretty big red flag too. Fraud owns no demographics. In all of these, there were no set demographics. These frauds were committed by equal opportunistic individuals and some groups of individuals. Not one specific ethnic group, not one defined sex, not one defined age. Heck, we have everybody involved. Young, old, men, women, blonde, brown, red hair, everybody. So, my colleague Janice Jansen of Global Team Solutions and I have reviewed 106 SBA and IDA loan and PPP loan fraud cases as well as unemployment fraud cases that the Department of Justice has issued press releases on. And we thought, again, that this information would be a really interesting broadcast. I don't know if I'd call it interesting, but thanks, Janice, for joining us for another exciting, definitely exciting episode of In the Embezzlement News. Thanks for having me, Susan. Great to be here. We have so much fun when we talk about all this stuff. We do. And, and, and we could talk about it. In fact, we were talking about it before we started recording and thought, okay, we, I, I think we have more um, than what we have time for today. So we'll just have to do another one. So if you like <laughs> this, just sure. always stay tuned because we always have it. Unfortunately, fraud will always be around. Fraud will always be something that Janice and I could talk about, especially as certified fraud examiners. <laughs> I mean, that is yeah. our job, right? Exactly. We're going to dive into and highlight some of the cases that were filed this year. But before we do, let me tell you about some of the interesting analysis I did. 
Of the cases we reviewed, 36 involved state unemployment benefits. 16 involved identity theft. Seven involved the accused inflating the number of employees on loan applications. 24, this just blows me away. 24, and these are the just ones we reviewed. So a fourth of the cases that we reviewed involved non-existent businesses. They they didn't even exist, but they filed right. a claim. They got an app. 19 involved non-existent employees. One of mine. I, it was really interesting. 19 of them. But here is where I say it involves the unadulterated greed. 13 were accused of paying luxurious personal items. That's very, very different from the day-to-day necessities, as you will hear in our cases. 13 luxurious personal expenses. Eight of them bought luxurious cars. Jags, Mercedes, Lamborghinis. That's just a few of the ones that were listed. Please understand, though, these were just the cases we reviewed. These were not, by any stretch of the imagination, all the cases that have been filed this year for the SBA and IDA loan or PPE loan fraud or unemployment fraud. The lowest case uh, amount that we uh, reviewed was 15000 The highest amount was $21,900,000. Oh, I'm sorry, $21,900,000. That's a little bit of a difference. Janice and I have talked a lot about these cases, and we have chosen some ones that we want to talk about. She's chosen three. I've chosen three. Well, that sounded really, I, I told you I was sounding really Texan-y today. <laughs> sorry yes, for the twang. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It is, it is a twang day. Uh, before we dive in, Let me also remind everybody that everyone is innocent until proven guilty by a court of law. That is why we will not mention the names of those that have been accused, even though their names have been publicized in the press release documents that we've reviewed. But we're choosing, Janice and I both are choosing not to give their names um, because they haven't been prosecuted yet. And so we just want to bring out some of the facts that were published by the press releases. So Janice, tell us about your first case. All right. So my first one is, it's a whole group of people from Brooklyn that uh, they they ended up stealing over $2 million in pandemic unemployment benefits. I mean, oh my gosh, $2 million. How how many? How many people? There's a group of eight of them. Eight. Eight people stole $2 million. Yes. Yes. Wow. So what they did was they, they stole the identity of other people, you know, third party, there were third party victims, which is interesting because I got, uh, we got in the mail, my husband did something from Michigan, we're in Missouri, you know, and uh, during COVID and the shutdown, we got something saying uh, about his unemployment being denied in Michigan. And I was like, Okay. <laughs> Serious. Yeah. So, so I found that really interesting because we had that happen there. And uh, so I had to call them and say, you know, we did not apply there. We never lived there. <laughs> there I guess there was a really from, good reason. So. It was really good reason his unemployment was denied in Michigan, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Very interesting though. So, yeah, so they stole the identity of these people and got all of this money in unemployment benefits. Um, You know, what's what's really sad to me, Susan, is that them doing that, it clogged up the system for 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 the people that really needed it. You know, I mean, it's you know, here they are using other people's identity and getting this money that could have went to other people. Cause I know I heard lots of stories and I'm sure you did too, of people having a hard time getting through to unemployment or getting those. Benefits. Oh yeah. So, Texas was brutal. It was yeah. really brutal. I had a lot of people that said they couldn't get through weeks. It took. I know. What else? I so know. Um, this was a group of people. How old were these people? You know, there were no ages on there, but from the pictures that I saw online, they're not that old. I mean, I would say in their 
maybe 20s, early 20s. Wait, probably. you saw pictures online? Oh, yes. They have pictures of them fanning the cash out. Why? You're <laughs> kidding. No. <laughs> oh, no. my gosh. So it's unreal. Unreal. The, I mean, no, they were bragging. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. And so I guess uh, the Department of Justice has caught six of them, but there's two two of the people that are still at large. Two are yeah. missing. Hmm. Yes, they are. They are. So very interesting. Uh, and like I said, just sad because it's like, gosh, I just, you know, same thing with Missouri. I know I heard lots of people here that were like, we can't get through. We're trying to to you know, go online and we get locked out and we try to call and it takes hours and hours, you know, so it's just sad that people when, would do that. When was the press release? Let's see. That one was, oh, that was just May 18th. Okay. So it's still so kind of recent. Very recent. Yeah, they might've actually recent. caught the guy then. I mean, they or... might have. Yeah. Yeah, the the two the two other suspects that that are missing. Actually, they do have the ages listed here. They're from 18 to 25. Oh, see, you guessed right. Yep. Yep. I can't believe. So they must have been on social media because if the pictures are on the yeah, internet. That's where the, that's where the pictures are uh all on social media with them standing wow. out there. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah, we we think that a lot of times when we have uh, dental practice embezzlement cases that they should pr- probably not flaunt the fact that they have money. Right, right. Kind of kind of does them in a little bit, right? It sure does. It sure oh, does. My gosh. Well, let me so. tell you about one that happened in Starkville, Mississippi. Oh. It was a 45-year-old man. He had $6 million, uh from the PPP. Six million. And he overstated the number of employees as well as the total amount of his payroll. So, I mean, that kind of goes hand in hand. If I have one employee and I say I have 20, then it's going to go from 10,000 to, you know, 200,000. So he filed the loans, though, for four different businesses through two different banks. So, he overstated the employees and the payroll, filed four different businesses through two different banks. He's in Mississippi. The banks were in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Interesting. So, yeah. I mean, isn't that so? It's not like Pennsylvania and New Jersey had a relationship with this guy in Mississippi to Absolutely. know that he really didn't have these uh, X number of employees and X number of payroll with the four different businesses. He claimed he had 743 employees. I think he had 10. Oh my God. Something like that. It was, it was, it was pretty exaggerated. It was pretty exaggerated. He did not use the funds for his business. Wait for my surprise. Look on that. I don't think any (laughs) of the ones we chose used their funds for their business. Right. So he Uh, got 6 million. He bought, a more than $1 million home and a $100,000 Tesla. Oh my goodness. Nice. Right. Right. In Mississippi, he bought a Tesla. I'm trying to figure out where the docking stations would be. Um, Yeah. And he invested in the stock market. So I guess he was planning for his future. Wait. There you go. (laughs) He was planning for his future. I think there He's, are other plans for his future. <laughs> I think there are other plans. I think the Department of Justice has other plans for his future. Oh, I can believe that. He invested in the stock market. So if he's convicted, he won't be living long in that new home and he won't have much of a mark, uh, future in the stock market because he faces up to 30 years in federal prison. Wow. Wow. And they'll ding him. If they if they proved that he, just like in all of our other cases, if they prove that he used, he intentionally, um, it goes to intention, if he intentionally defrauded the government by the $6 million and he used that money towards whatever, then they have the right to seize that property. 
right. if that was indeed the case. So that home is about to be uh, auctioned and the hundred thousand dollar Tesla probably lost a lot of value just being driven around. Yeah. It might be 80,000. So if you're looking for a good deal on a Tesla, you might check that out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I thought that one was really interesting. Six million. And, oh, and yeah. is it worth it? I mean, I, seriously, is it worth it? I don't he even know get... how you could live with your, you know, like how can you live and not be scared all the time? That's what gets me with these people. How do you not be looking over your shoulder all the time? Well, it, you know, let's say he got the PPP loan last year. And so then he got the money. Let's say he got the money and he's feeling pretty comfortable by July. Well, in order to buy a $1 million home, that takes a couple of months. Right. So you have that home for a couple of months. Well, now we're up to October. So he might have lived in that house for, what, four months, five months before he was arrested. Oh, I just, yeah. you know, that's just not worth it. I no. Bad choice. Bad choice. All right. what's What do you have up? Well, interesting, because my, my next one is uh, is pretty much like that one this this was a lady in oakland uh california and she's 31 years old she got a million dollars and so she it, it's same thing she used hers on luxury items she didn't buy a house but she did use a private jet and she oh my had god some, i know right i would love to have a private jet i'm just yes. saying that'd be well, wonderful call, call. <laughs> Call me, dear, when you get your private jet. I will. I will. I'll fly to come see you. Oh, that'd be awesome. Uh, but she, so she did basically the same thing. She showed she had up to 89 employees with her payroll being over $700,000 a month. And oh my gosh, this was all, she, none of these businesses ever had any business. They never showed any income. They were in, it was four shell companies that she had. So, so she, wait, wait. So they didn't have, so did she have any, any real employees? No. You're kidding. So how many no. did she say she had? She said she had 89, 89 employees. Her payroll was $700,000 a wow. month. Wow. That's what she said. So then, so she got, she got a PPP loan first for $684,000. And then her second one that she got was 307, 307,000. So there's your million there. And then she also attempted to get an idle loan <laughs> for one of the companies for 150 and she got 150,000 on that one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So I want to go back to this 89 employees. I just pulled up the math, the calculator on this. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know where my brain goes. Uh -huh. I'm like I know. 89 employees for 700,000 a month. Good God. I wanted to work for her. I know, right? The average amount for her employees is $7,865 a month. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That's average. Yeah. She want I mean, to go work for her. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I mean, you know, we'd probably get paid. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to know. I, I don't think she wants us on the payroll, Janice. No, probably not. <laughs> I'm going to say not. I'm going to say not, too. Now, she also did get some Louis Vuitton bags, just in case you want to know. You know, you got to show, you got to get that Louis Vuitton. Oh, and uh, Oh, my goodness. And where, <laughs> where did she shop? Neiman. Yeah. Of course. Now she did buy some things at the San Francisco Giants dugout store. Oh. Oh, uh -huh. I see. Yep. She used that. And she bought a Mercedes and a Land Rover. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's some um, quite a bit of change there. She wired some money to family also. So that was kind. She gave some you know, things away. <laughs> I I've talked all, a lot about I've talked a lot about my Collins. In fact, I'm going to bring it up again. The Collins Street Bakery embezzlement. Uh huh. That embezzler, his favorite place to shop was Neiman Marcus too. Hey, you know, I, if you got it, you might as well go for it. You might as well. If you <laughs> stole it, you might as well spend it. Right. 
<laughs> hey, she was arrested not far from you. She was in Austin. Oh, she was in Austin. Yeah. Really? Yeah. She so when she got arrested, they're they're talking about shipping her back to California. But she hasn't hers hasn't been done yet. Let's see. That was February fifth. So um but yeah, they said that they were probably going to have her appear in Oakland. Well, so the thing is, she got two, didn't she? Two PPPs? She got two PPPs and one idol. That's amazing. Yeah. For four fraudulent companies. Yep, four shell companies she had. I wonder if she used the same company on each one. Or if, hang on, if, well, that would only be three. One company for the first PPP, no? Oh. She must have done it for all four. Yeah, I don't I don't remember seeing if they if she spaced it out for each company. I just know that it said I mean she created false documents, false bank statements, false tax records, uh, you know. It, so hey, it, it was a lot of work for her to get Oh yeah. That, Susan, I'm Let just me, telling you. <laughs> I, she 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 had to do a lot to get that. She so, did. I just refinanced my home loan. And it was amazing to me because um, I had a, got a mortgage in 2015. Well, it's only been six years, but the interest rate was so low that I decided in to, and I dropped it almost by two points. Nice. And so, but what amazed me and it was so entirely frustrating was the amount of information I had to provide them in order yeah. to refinance my home loan, which I had a history of paying on time as well as an exceptional credit rating. Mm-hmm. I'm known and yet, oh my gosh, the amount of information I had to provide. And I had to sign a document that said that they could uh, get my tax returns from the IRS. Well, oh, when wow. I asked about that, because I never had to do that before. Right. In 2011 or 15. And so it was like I was going really confused and frustrated at the number of hoops I had to jump through. Um, when I asked about that, they said, well, you know, you don't understand how easy it is to modify your tax returns. And so that's why we get them from the IRS. And I just kind of laughed and went, oh. Yeah, I do know how easy it is to modify your tax returns. You're like, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, I do. see where you're coming from. (laughs) I'll give you some slack. I'm okay with that. I mean, it just would never even cross my mind to do something that would, I mean, I just, they'd ask for something. I'd go into Quicken or QuickBooks and just print the report and send it to them. And, you know, it was like, well, this is what it is. Here it is. (laughs) Yeah, here you go. Yeah, but. For the IDA loans and the PPPs, I had to get less information. I mean, For nothing had to be from the IRS. Right. That's what's bizarre to me. And so she got away with all of that because yeah. she didn't have to provide. And so after the fact, and, and part of that is what you were saying earlier, part of that is, is because they were, you know, the government was just trying to get the money out into the hands of the people that needed it. That's right. Quickly, you know, and now we're it having all just to come. came about too fast, you know. Yeah. It was all too fast for them but to, now, to put those safeguards in place, I think. Right. You know, but now to to have to go back and say, you know, look at the tax returns. And, and that's what they're doing. They're cross-checking with the IRS. They're tra- cross-checking with the state governments. And they're uncovering all of this. Right. And so um, I that is so interesting. Yeah. I I mean, how many flights do you think she got on the private jet? Yeah, I don't know, because she she did fly commercial as well. So, you know, Hmm. it wasn't just private jet. Do you think she flew coach or do you think she flew? (laughs) I don't think so. (laughs) Well, she couldn't get many in on that. Because didn't you say she was arrested in February? She was. So she yeah, couldn't February have gotten very many flights. No. Well, depends on when she got the money, though. 
It said, mm -hmm. oh, they were between April and June of 2020. So, well, so here's, here's the real problem. And this is for my friends that are Oakland fans, because I know you listen to the podcast. <laughs> Why in the world? She was from Oakland and she was buying stuff at the San Francisco Giants dugout store. That's, that's what sealed her fate right there. <laughs> I'm just going to say. <laughs> Oak, Oakland is my backup team. And so right now they're doing really good. They should have, she should have just gone to the Oakland store. Yeah. Instead no of San Francisco. I mean, Maybe San Francisco's been better off. The Giants do have a better stadium than the A's, but anyways, well, I thought that was it. Well, 30 years also in prison. Oh, Same man. as your last one. And, uh, and a one million dollar fine if she gets convicted. So. Does she get to pay that from the money she stole? Yeah, I think it's gone. Oh uh, well, she I wired mean, it my like it's gone. Yeah, she spent it all, and they're never going to get the value. No. You know, in a lot of our cases, we've seen them uh, acquire, uh, just like they did with the horse farmer. They acquired all the land, the property, and everything, and. Um, horse i guess that was kind of an oxymoron and i'm from texas forgive me it's a horse <laughs> rancher <laughs> yeah right i'm gonna hear from that <laughs> that was a bad mistake um but they will acquire the property and stuff that was but they'll never get the value well yeah. and not on airfare no and hotels and Private jet. I mean, she just took the private jet. She didn't buy it. So they're not going to have that property either. You know? No. So, so her next accommodations will not be as nice as those hotels. I'm sure. Probably not. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, yeah, not so much. All right. Well, let me tell you about this next guy. He's a 50, 56 year old Colorado doctor. And he got, 118,000 in COVID relief funds from a medical clinic that he worked at and he transferred the money to his personal account. I well, think, isn't that a good idea? <laughs> I, I actually, by the way, and I know she listens to the podcast too. One of my old fraud case clients called me and said that their CPA told them to put the uh, COVID relief funds as shareholder distribution and transfer them to their personal account. And I went, uh, no, <laughs> that is not what you need to do. Don't do that, please. That looks really bad. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Um, anyways, <laughs> he did. He had filed for 179999 in loans. But he only got 118, and he didn't even, he just worked there. He didn't even own the clinic. Wow! This guy was so entangled with what he did. Um, after he was terminated by the owners, get a load of this. After he was terminated, they found out he did that. They found out he took the money, and after he was terminated, he filed bankruptcy for the clinic without the owners knowing what he was doing. You're kidding. He didn't even have the authority. Uh-uh. So when he did that, he submitted more false documents. So oh fraud. Oh, my gosh. Fraud begats fraud begats fraud. I mean, it was like, oh, my gosh. So basically, the clinic only got 61000 And they he filed bankruptcy against, against it for the clinic. And he spent the money on personal expenses, travel, home improvements. But you know what I don't get? He had been a family medicine doctor for over 32 years. 32 really? years. Yeah. Why did he, where did all his money go before? I, I don't know. I kind of have a feeling he probably had dug himself a hole in debt. He I mean, I don't know. Have. You know, we've seen enough of this happen that, that I just, I couldn't find any other information I dug deep trying to figure out why in the world you would choose to do that when you've got a good income, 32 years as being a medical doctor, a family right. medicine doctor. Uh, and, but he didn't own the clinic. So I don't know 
what kind of clinic it was in or right. what, but I got to tell you, if I was the owner of that clinic, I would hire somebody like you and I, um, a fraud examiner to come right. review the financials. Yeah, because, for sure. Because that move uh, was very uh, bold. That was the nice way to put it. Well, that, and he had access to all of their oh yeah their number. You know, I mean, it's kind of like why did he have access to all of that information too? Because if he can file to get the loan, he had to have a, a lot of the company information to do right. That. Well, I kind of I got the feeling from everything I read that he managed the clinic as well as operated oh, it. Okay, that he gotcha. just didn't own it, right? So, but. Oh my gosh. Wow. He had to have a lot of information to be able to file bankruptcy. That's what I'm saying. That's, it seems like he would have had to have a lot of inside information to be able to do, to get the loan as well as file the bankruptcy. What's interesting is that he doesn't benefit by filing bankruptcy. No. So why did he do that? I don't know. I don't know. Unless he wanted it to be a blemish on their record or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that could be retaliation for firing. Right, him. right. That's possible. Anything's possible. We've learned anything is completely possible when we you're sure talking have. about fraud and embezzlement. All right, who do you have next? All right, so I have the first uh, woman in the nation to be charged with misappropriating monies that was designed for medical relief for COVID. So oh, this part of the lady, CARES Act? Yes, part of the CARES Act. She um she took the money. Well, so this her she had a company. She had a a home health company and that actually closed, filed bankruptcy in January of 2020. So the company wasn't even in they weren't even seeing patients or anything when COVID came out. Okay. Um she had gotten something from Medicare asking her for an overpayment refund of, you ready? $1.6 million. She needed wait. to pay. <laughs> are, are you kidding me? No. Okay, so, so wait a minute. They overpaid her $1.6 million? Yes, yes. And this is before COVID even happened. This okay, was we before. know. What what happens in dentistry when Medicare Medicaid overpays? Yeah, you usually get a thing saying pay me back. You Yeah, you, or they or they, or they withhold take it your, out of your money. Yeah. 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 So, so why I don't is know. It different? I don't know why it's different with Medicare because I, you would think they'd do the same thing. No, and I can't I just like to say I don't think a dental office would ever be overpaid 1.6 before they'd ever hone down and come after them. No, I don't think so either. Well, I mean, like even MetLife and Delta Dental and all of them will get the money back. Um, oh, yeah. On the next patient that you send through, you know. So it's very strange oh my God. That, they, that there was that big of an overpayment. I don't and know why had they over, why had they overpaid her? Uh, she had submitted claims on patients who they say didn't qualify for the home health services. So they, so they didn't get pre-approval. Well, I guess not. And then they didn't get approval before they sent them the check. I mean, it's, it's very interesting that Medicare overpaid by that much. I don't know how that happened. Sounds a little bit suspicious of insurance fraud. It, it probably is. That would be my, my guess. But so this company was never operational at all during the pandemic. Okay. Why? Because she filed bankruptcy and closed in January of 2020. Oh, my gosh. So of 2020. Was, yeah. So she was never even operational. But then she received $37,000 from the CARES Act, from that provider relief fund. So she went ahead and requested this provider relief fund. Um, and this was all designated to the medical treatment of COVID patients. Oh, good so, grief. I know, isn't that sad? What she really do for sad. what she do with the money? She uh, gave it to family members. Wrote personal check or wrote checks to family members. 
That's, and just used it for personal use. Nothing, I mean, nothing to help patients. It wasn't, mm. it wasn't put out there for the, uh, for anything with COVID patients or anything like that. So. Well, maybe she was trying Very to help sad. her family, but it was still fraudulent. Maybe. Yeah. But I, yeah, I don't know. So this lady was in Michigan. Very so interesting. She didn't take any uh, private jets. No, she didn't have any private jets. Not that they, not that they said in the thing. It was just all used for family members and for herself. Well, that was probably one of the least amounts. One hundred thirty-seven. Is that what you said? No, just thirty-seven. It was oh, small. thirty-seven thousand. Yeah, yeah. That's, it was small. Was that our smallest one? I think so. No, um, I had a fifteen. No, 000. there was yeah, there was a fifteen thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just found that one interesting because it was the first person that was charged, you know, with with misappropriating CARES funds Act. from the CARES Act. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's... And that was February, uh, February eleventh, twenty twenty one. Yeah, thirty seven thousand is not a lot of money to do anything with. I mean, it's, no, that would be, you know. I almost feel it? like she paid her bills with it or something. Yeah. You know, it just said how, much is a, use. how much is a Louis Vuitton purse? I mean, see, I don't even know. Oh, if God. you don't know, you can't afford it, right? Yeah, <laughs> I don't even know, but they're not cheap. <laughs> Every time I see somebody with one, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'd be buying a Louis Vuitton uh, purse out of the trunk of somebody in L.A. Right. You're getting a knockoff. <laughs> I'll definitely be getting a knockoff. <laughs> All right. So the last one we're going to talk about is is my favorite, and I saved the best for last. <laughs> it's a Vermont man, 57 years old. He owned a pizzeria, and he got 660000 in PPP funds. Wow. So... He inflated information about the employees and payroll and falsified. So I just told you the story about the tax forms. He falsified his tax form that qualified him for a larger loan because, you know, there was a limit that what you could ask for. And if you submitted tax forms, then you might qualify. It still had to go through the SBA. But, oh, my gosh. He falsified it. So, you know, he worked hard for it too, Janice. <laughs> so he said he had nearly 50 employees, but the business had paid fewer than 10 at the pizzeria. Oh, $660, wow. $660,000 for the pizzeria. Well, guess what he did? With 10 employees. With 10 employees. Wow. wow. After he got the money, he sold the pizzeria. <laughs> And seized the opportunity to use nearly all the funds for personal expenses, including, wait for it, purchasing a farm in Vermont oh. so that he could buy several alpacas. 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 We'll talk Not about horses. That in a Usually we do the horse thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's <laughs> alpacas this time. <laughs> We've gone from horses to alpacas. All right. He also purchased an older GMC Sierra truck, a 2007. I thought that was kind of interesting. Why didn't he buy new? But he bought a 2007. I guess he was saving his money for what he bought next in a car, which was a classic 1950 Hudson, a 1950 Hudson. Oh, very and, nice. And, and wait for this. I did some deep diving to find out about this guy. He's a weekly podcaster. Oh, is he? Yes. Who for a you week could do this for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> for a weekly cryptocurrency themed show. All right. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? So, wow. Yeah, that kind of was like pretty sad. So <laughs> After us talking about the horse um, hair mattress purchase discovery oh. in the Collins Street Bakery, that seems to come up almost every time we talk. Yeah. Um, and so, oh. if you haven't heard that, um, there is a horse hair mattress. Apparently, I don't know about it. Therefore, I can't afford it. Um, <laughs> that you can get that is really comfortable. Um, 
So I had to check out alpacas. I mean, what do they bring to the table? Why do you get alpacas? So in a quick research, (laughs) it appears that in Vermont, alpacas really enjoy the weather. And this led to what I didn't know. We all know that their wool is used for a lot of things. They use it for sweaters, right. um, alpaca sweaters, you know, and it's really soft. But you won't believe this. You won't believe this. Yes, their wool is also used in very nice mattresses. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. Some say they are the most luxurious soft mattresses available. And if you can't afford a mattress, a whole mattress full of alpaca wool, you can get a mattress topper of alpaca wool. Really? But wait, there's more. Wait, wait. You'll have to tell your husband, Brad, about this. (laughs) Because alpaca manure can be put directly onto the fields and flower beds without mixing it with other ingredients, you know, like you have to with cow and horse manure. Because it's so hot. So when you're getting ready to, to get those flower beds ready for the spring, alpaca manure may be what you need to put in there. I'm going to get right on that. Ew. <laughs> okay, that was def- definitely a squirrel moment. <laughs> but oh my God. These He's mattresses like- killed me. The horse hair and the alpaca. I'm like, what? In the What's world. next? We have to do. We we're gonna have to do a deep dive on how many different <laughs> kinds of fillers mattresses have. No kidding. That Anyways, so back to the the new alpaca <laughs> farm owner. Yeah. I also found out he's still on LinkedIn. Oh really? Yeah. He's well. In all fairness, well, I think he was needs arrested. a new job. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> He was probably, I, the press release just came out on May 7th. So I'm going to assume that he was arrested sometime around then. Right. Um, and he had some endorsements on LinkedIn. So all that to say, you just need to be careful who you endorse. Yeah. You because I wonder how they feel. About, down. Yeah. I wonder about how they feel about endorsing him now. Right. Can they, I bet they'd have to get hold of LinkedIn to take that off. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know if you can take that off. Or... No, I don't either. I just to let all the people know that have endorsed me, I'm fine. <laughs> I, I don't even go down the road to do anything that it, that could come back to me. I'm too paranoid. Oh, um, my gosh. Yeah. So, and, and to let everybody know, he has not published a podcast since the press release from the U.S. Attorney's Office. So he's taken May off. <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, he had a podcast that posted, and the next day was when he, when, oh, he wow. got arrested. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. Very so, interesting. Sadly, if convicted again, if they can prove he purchased the farm with fraudulent funds, like we've been saying, his owning the farm will be very, very short-lived. Very short-lived. As well as that Hudson. I'd say the Hudson lost value, but actually Hudson uh, gains value because it's a 1950 Hudson. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I would think that he would, yeah, well, the government would get some money out of that. <laughs> Do you even remember what a Hudson looks like? I don't. No, let's see. It was before both our times. It's yeah, like, a little bit. <laughs> just a, it was just a little bit for me, but um, it didn't say whether it was a Hornet or a Commodore. But in Disney, the, the oh. movie Cars. Yes. Yes. The Hudson was one of the ones that was depicted in That's Cars. That's right. That's right. He was, uh, he was the head, he was the old guy. Um, yeah. Yeah. That raced before. Yeah. 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 How funny. So, so this guy had good taste, just really bad ethics. Yeah. He sure did. Really bad ethics. <laughs> Gosh. Well, what's our takeaway? <sighs> well, there's, I mean, there was a lot of fraud happening and we knew that was going to be happening with, with the pandemic and all of that. Um, Cause I just, I just feel like there's going to be continuing to have more and more that we're going to find. 
if there is going yeah here's one of the takeaways um if you if you have a press release published by the, by the department of justice we may be talking about you on our next podcast there you go <laughs> <laughs> well there's a good takeaway <laughs> or or how about this one if you decide you're going to gain fraud fraudulent funds at least do something fun with it because you only have a short period of time before you're going to get caught to enjoy that money <laughs> so you might as well go ahead and enjoy it as quick as you can take a couple of trips on a private jet because that'll be the last time you fly somewhere yeah you may be in a, in a cell for 30 years after that My yeah I, you know and it's just like our our embezzlement cases janice i just it always amazes me how, because in order to do the things that are needed to commit the fraud, they have to assume they're not going to be caught. Because then why would it be worth it, right? Right, right. And so if they assume that, though, I mean, they're almost always caught in yeah. some way or another. Right. So it just doesn't, I don't doesn't understand. Stay off. Mm -mm. not in the end you know it just never it doesn't ever pay off but nope. it's the easy way and that's the that's the thing is people are looking for the easy way and it's it's sad because you're better off working hard for it and being able to sleep yeah <laughs> sleep at night I, I like to sleep at night and i sleep really good <laughs> right. so just to summarize Chances are, if you're listening to this podcast, you may never consider what we've been talking about. That's good. That's a really good thing. Naively, I would love to believe that all my listeners choose to do the right thing every time, every single time. And just to help, that's why In the Embezzlement News is such an important addition to the podcast to hopefully keep you that way. Fraud and embezzlement, just like Janice and I said, they always get discovered. Typically, by becoming too comfortable in the belief that they will never get caught. They flaunt something. <laughs> they take pictures of themselves flaunting out the cash. One of mine took a picture by um, a, uh, a gambling machine. I, I just, I'm amazed. When they do get caught, and they do, it destroys trust. It destroys treasured relationships. It destroys families. And it destroys your future. They may have had a great past, enjoying the fruits of their laborious threat theft, but the future becomes uncertain and fragile. Janice and I are both American certified fraud examiners, working nationally for our clients in primarily the dental industry. Please understand fraud, theft, nor embezzlement suddenly heals itself and goes away. If you suspect something, give us a call. I will list our contact information in the show notes. In my ethics presentations, I will always talk about our choices making a difference and that the people that we surround ourselves with truly make a difference in our lives. That's why Janice is also my friend as well as a colleague, because we hold each other accountable. Thank you, Janice, for always being a splendid guest on the <laughs> podcast. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. I enjoy it every time. And until next time, you listeners keep making good choices for your lives. Continue to be honest so you can sleep at night and be sure to lead others with your integrity. Take care. That's a wrap for this podcast of Money In, Money Out. Thanks for listening. Be sure to write down the most valuable tip you learned today so you don't forget it. And remember, you can find out more about all the valuable books and services Susan has to offer at www.susangunsolutions.com.